Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christian, and I'm here to talk about uh, operating HBase, uh, things you need to know. Um, operating and administrating HBase is quite a broad range that I cannot cover in uh, these 45 minutes of my talk, so I, I, uh, I will focus on, on, uh, on re region-related topics. Um, here's an outline of, of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, first, we will dive into some architectural details of HBase, because I think um, as a developer, as well as a dev op guy, you need to know the moving parts of HBase. Then we will have a look at the, an, an overview of the, the utilities that, that come with HBase, and then I will introduce Hannibal, an, uh, an open source tool to visualize region splits and the distribution, distribution in the whole cluster. And then I will wrap up with uh, some challenges and lessons we have learned while running a production HBase cluster. And then finally, I will leave you with a few uh, resources to get started. Uh, briefly about me, I'm a software architect at Centric. I'm uh, working extensively with open source tools like uh, Hadoop, HBase, HDFS, Suki, Posola, and so on, on, on big data problems. And I'm also the founder and uh, organizer of the big data user group in Switzerland. So if you are near Zurich, so please come by and visit us on the next event, which will take place uh, in the end of November. And uh, the contacts uh, are down there. So let's get started with the, now let's see what's under the hood of HBase. Um, HBase is uh, modeled after Google's big table, as you probably all know, and that it's essentially a multi-dimensional sorted map. A sorted map is like a tree map, if you're familiar with the Java uh, data structure, and you have a row key where you can look up items by, and with this uh, row key you got a correlated map and containing um, columns, a correlated uh, map. With this map or with the map associated with that uh, key, you got uh, you got columns which are byte arrays and values which are also byte arrays. It's a, it's a sorted map and not a hash map, meaning that when you store a bunch, bunch of data in it, for example, you have a row key A and a row key B, they are stored next to other on disk. Meaning, this allows you to uh, look up or scan a part of your table specifically with one seek. Um, the, the column has a two-level structure. It's the first part is a column family which is used to group similar data, or data of the same type. And the second one is the column qualifier, which is an arbitrary string. And uh, a cell is uniquely identified by three dimensions. First, the row key, then the column, which is composed of the column family and the column qualifier, and the timestamp. The timestamp is the third dimension, and that's why it is called a multi-dimensional sorted map. Um, here we have an example from, taken from the big table paper, and it's a, a slice from the web table, uh, where you have a row key, a reverse URL uh, from uh, cnn.com, and then you have two column families. One is the, the content content uh, column family and the anchor column family. And the interesting part is that the, the, the cells uh, in the contents are, have three versions, T3, T5, and T6, with the current version uh, on top. So um, this is very a very unique data model for HBase. And uh, a region is just a contiguous set of rows in HBase. And the region is also the unit of distribution and availability. So how is this actually stored on disk? Um, on disk, we have actually for every column family, or every column family is stored separately on disk in a so-called store, which is 
uh, over here is the, is the store for the Carlin family anchor, and uh, on the left side for the counted Carlin family. Um, um, when the edit first comes into the hosting region server, it is first uh, stored in the wider head lock. That's uh, like a binary lock in the, the relational database uh, world, which is used for recovery in case the server crashes. And after that, it is written into an intermediate store called the MEM store. If the MEM store reaches a certain uh, level, the, the, the key values are stored into so-called store files, which are uh, persisted on HDFS. Um, and the, the, the structure, how it is sorted on disk, is very predictable. So it's uh, sorted by um, ascending by row key and column key and descending by the timestamp. So it allows you to query uh, queries, uh, give me the recent version of the, column, the row key and the column key, for example. Or you can easily do a scan uh, by uh, giving the start key of a part of your table. Um, so in the example I've just given, uh, the, the, the data is written into the memstore file, as I said, and then flushed to file. And uh, uh, HBase per periodically uh, uh, merges these small files together in a, in big of, in a big OH file, which is, which is then stored on HDFS. And this uh, phase is called minor compaction. Um, deleted cells also has an entry in the H files. But they are all uh, they, they they are uh, in the file until uh, the major compaction happens. So the major compaction picks up all these H files on the for the specific region and, and merges it in a huge big H file, and removes in, a, in during this phase all the the cells which are flagged for deletion. Um, re, um, after this compaction, we have for every um, for every column family one big H file and uh, HBase checks if this file reaches the configured split size, and if that's happened, the region is split into two halves and then distributed again over the whole cluster. So that is how the automatic splitting in HBase works. And here we have a high-level overview, overview of the system, and um, HBase uh, relies on two other uh, Apache projects, first of all on HDFS, with this, which is the reliable storage layer of HBase, and this handles checksumming, um, replication, and failover. The other system is Apache Zookeeper, which is a highly available coordination service for distributed systems, and uh, HBase uses it to store some metadata on it to know where which nodes are available in the system, and so on. The client also uh, contacts Zookeeper directly to find out where the region servers are in the cluster, and then talks directly to the region server uh, holding that data the client wants to read. So in that case, the master uh, is not in the, in the data path, and it's not... Um, and is out of the loop, loop in, this, is th in this data pass. HBase itself has three, um, three main components. One is the master, which is responsible for, for um, assigning the regions to the different region servers. It also handles failovers if on the system, so in case a, a region server crashes, it tries to take those regions from, the, from the, that server and, and, and distribute it again on the other available, available region servers. Um, and it's also coordinating the whole slave thing. The, the region server, they are just uh, there for reading and writing data. So on a running cluster, you can always add or remove region server on any time, and it's no problem. The balancing is done by the HBase master. And there are always a bunch of regions there, that's not just one. I mean, that's, it's a distributed system, and you have n of those. And uh, to talk with HBase, there is a Java API. 
uh, which the client uses to read and write from, from the data store and also for some, uh, some administrative tasks like you can trigger a compaction or a split or kind of those things. And um, I just want to briefly mention that the key design is very important. Uh, I think Lars will talk about this after my talk and I just want to mention that uh, that's a proper key design is very important for, for a well-functioning edge base. Um, it it's, it's, uh, functions best if the distribution for read and writes are uniformly distributed over your cluster. And uh, if you have, uh, uh, the, if the reads and writes are just hitting one specific uh, region server, then you get the so-called region hotspotting, which is, which is not good for your cluster because it could be that your, your, your region server shut down and then the master tries to balance the regions on another server and then this one is hit and it's, it's a cascading problem, kind of. So you have to be careful when, when designing a, a, a good, a good uh, row key or an intelligent row key in that case. And uh, now, after the internals, I would like to give you a short overview about uh, the uh, HBase utilities, which you can use for administrative tasks. And here is a, an overview. The first one is HBCK, which checks and fixes uh, table integrity, uh, fixed table integrity and regions consistency. So it's a really useful tool, which you should run regularly to see if your, if, your, if your cluster is fine and everything is okay and your meta table is fine and your regions are uh, stored on HDFS and all, the, all those kind of things. You can check the, the reference guide on, on, um, on the HBase page and there's everything described very well. And the H file and the H log files, are, I mean the storage file and the writer headlock are both binary files so to determine that the content of those files, there are two, two uh, tools available. There is also a, re a offline meta repair tool which you can use to rebuild your meta table from file system. And there is uh, also some two web interfaces available. One is for the master node and for every region so which displays you also some valuable information about your cluster like requests per seconds, your the number of uh, regions deployed on your class, on your region server, and so on. And of course, there are other mon monitoring tools around, like uh, Ganglia. That's the, that's what we are using for, and many others. I'm I'm sure I'm not I'm not aware of all of them. There are so many around, and but the the one unique thing they have, they all. The, the, all these tools rely on the, 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 chain, the, the metrics provided through JMX. And um, yeah, that's, it's, it's a huge bunch of metrics which you can use and it's very overwhelming. And we, we honestly have some problems when we, have, we look at Ganglia and how to find out if something is wrong or not because they are, the drop down is so huge you even can, can see what's the problem. So besides the automatic splitting, as I mentioned before, there is a possibility to, to do it manually. And the advantage of doing manually is that you time control your splitting by yourself, meaning you can do it on a, on a weekend when your HBase is not so heavy loaded, and you also have a control over your all region servers are available at any time. And um, there are many there are three possible ways to do, a, to do a split. It's over or via the master web interface I just mentioned before. You can, uh, you can add a row key there and it tries to, to split your region at the given row key. And there is a, the HBase shell command which you can use to split um, your region. And uh, you can also create a, uh, you can create a table with pre, with pre split regions, so when you load data in it, it, it already has the split keys and then it's, it's a, a sliced on that given keys. And you can also execute a rolling split of all the regions on an existing table. I think with, with this tool, the region splitter, you can also add your own uh, algorithm 
to do your, your own splitting functionality. And, and the, the H base, H region ma max file size determines the, the size of, or is the property which best specifies the region size in bytes. By default, this value is set to one gigabyte, um, which means that when a region exceeds this size, it's, uh, it's, it's split in two. We set this size to 100 gigabyte in order to, to, uh, to disable the automatic split functionality and to do it by ourselves. So we did that and we thought, okay, um, how do we know, how do, our, how do we monitor our region grow now because we have to split, our, uh, split uh, the regions by ourselves. How do we know the distribution? And where do we know when we have to split a region? Where, wh what is the optimal split key for the region? So that was the questions after we disabled um, automatic splitting. And as in our opinion, none of the tools I just described, either the, the command line tools nor the the monitoring tools could answer the question very well. We decided to, to, uh, to build or to develop our own solution, which I will present right now. Um, it's a tool we called Hannibal. It's a web-based tool to visualize region sizes, the distribution in the cluster, and, um, and the compaction history, and so on. And if I have a... Uh, uh, Wi-Fi which works, I hope I, I can show you a live demo, or probably, no, just one, I missed one slide. <laughs> um, a few facts about Hannibal, it's an open source tool, I said, it's uh, published on GitHub, so you can check it out. It's a web-based, it's a web-based tool, it's implemented in Scala, and it's currently um, it's currently compatible with HBase 0.90, and that's because our production cluster is uh, CDH 3.4, and that's the, the HBase version that ships with, with Cloudera. We will add support for higher HBase versions, versions very soon, and please check it out on GitHub, install it, have a look at it, play around with it, and let us know what you think about it. So it's important to to know what the community think about it and so that we can have further developments on those projects. Okay, let's see if we have a... Uh, uh, okay, so I think it works. That's the home screen of Hannibal. You can't see it very well, but you have, you have an overview of your cluster with this one, your, all your region servers, and every bar is a... Uh, Every colored bar, which you can't see very well, represents a table. And you have a... Let me see if this works. Yeah, you have some, you have some uh, tooltip on every table. This one is called RTP. That's actually view of our uh, staging system. We have just six region servers, so it's not a really big HBase cluster, but yeah, it's, as I said, it's a staging cluster, so that's the tooltip for the, the article table. The, you see, there is the, the size in megabytes and the number of regions deployed for this, this uh, region server. Then there on top there, there is another uh, part of a table from the source table with just nine regions and so on. And on the right side you have a, a legend where you can toggle the visibility of the, of the tables. So in this case, you just see the, the overview of the... or disable the article table, which is the biggest one. So you have the possibility to toggle all the different tables over here. So if you want to, more, to, to see more about your region, your specific region, you, you have the possibility to, to click on one of these colored bars. And if I have, yes, it works, great. And here you see uh, the detailed view for a specific table. That's the, the, the article table. And uh, here is the red line indicates the configured 
split size of your, of your age base. And here we have a nice example. We have one region which are already reached the, the, the region split size, so we should immediately split it by hand, manually, because if it reaches the 100 or the 40 gigabytes, we set it to 40 gigabytes in this case, then, it get, then the automatic split will happen and that would take quite a long. And this view is, uh, here the regions are, are ordered in size, so we have big regions, big regions with uh, 40 gigabytes over here, and, uh, and uh, small ones like that one, and you can see it, it's, I don't know, a few megabytes probably. And uh, the distribution is from the, from, or the ordering is from left to right. And the reason why we have so irregular uh, distribution is uh, based on our, our, our um, data load we have. It's very irregular data load. Which, uh, we are, that's a, that's a HBase is used for social media monitoring software. And we, are, we are fetching a lot of content. And uh, obviously, most of them is stored in this region with the with the, with the row starting row key with the, what is that? Belgium is something. It's, it's a block po block uh, domain, I think. And you see also the size of the of the whole region and the, the number of store files. Um, if you want to dr drill down and see more what's happened on a region, you can click on a, on a bar. Okay, I hope it wor will work. Yeah, okay, great. And here you have a detailed view of the specific region. On top here you have, um, you have the, the region the region key, which is composed of the art of the table name, the, the starting row key, and some uh, timestamp and MD5 hash key. Then you have the then you see the start key and the end key of the table, the, on which uh, region server is deployed, the store file, and so on. That the the, 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 the configured mem store flash size and a very important. Uh, number is this longest compaction during the last seven days. So in that case it was 620 seconds. So around 10 minutes, a, a, a major compaction, or the, the, the longest compaction in the last seven days took 10 minutes. So that's, a, that's also a sign when this time is uh, quite huge to, to, to split the, the region in two parts. Uh, below that you have a time range uh, which is which is a part of 24 hours, and you have also the possibility to to change the scope of the view. So if we look at just the last from two o'clock this afternoon till now, you see here the the three. You see here the store files like. Like it's uh, over here with 14 store files for this specific region. Then this red uh, dot uh, is signs a compaction. At the current state, we cannot uh, differentiate between major compaction and minor compaction. So you have just to hover over these red dots to see the time the last uh, compaction took. So this one was around. 3,000 in milliseconds and so on. And after a compaction, the store file size, size goes down, as I explained, because it takes the small files and uh, merging it into a bigger one. So that's why it's, it's going down. Here you have also um, a legend to, to toggle the views, the store file size, and also the mem store, which is steadily increasing until it reaches the the threshold and then the flush is coming to disk and then the, sto the mem store is empty and then it's starting again when, when we're writing on, on, uh, on this region. 
So this helps us a lot when we have to decide when to know, what, so how we know when a region is, uh, is ready for, 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 a, for a region split, a, man, a manual region split, and uh, also we know very good what is going on on a specific region in terms of compaction, in terms of MEM store, in terms of uh, store file size. So it helps us to decide when we have to split again. Um, if you want to read more about Hannibal, there is a, a wiki page which uh, Which, you, which explains everything, the usage, the like an introduction, and so on. So it's very well documented at that stage. So please check it out, have a look at it, and just let us know if you find an issue, add it on GitHub, and we will take care of it. OK, so that was my fallback. Um, the future plans are that we li would like to add the HBase 0.92 API as soon as possible because with that, re with that API we have the possibility to decide if it's a re major minor compaction or a major compaction so we can, can uh, change our front end in that case so that, that you immediately see it on, on that detailed region page when a, when a major or minor compaction happens. Then we would also like to add a, add a tool to find the best region key. When you, when you need to split the region, you have to say what is the, the, the split key for, your, for that specific region. So we would like to add a tool we give, which gives you a hint for your, for your region key so that you can split it with the tools I just mentioned. Then also we would like to expose the metrics we gathered over the API and, and, uh, and uh, through JMX. OK, um, now uh, let me round up with some challenges and lessons we have learned while running a, and operating a production cluster. Um, the challenges are, well, first of all, we are quite new to HBase. We are working, we have been working just two years with HBase so far. and. Uh, so our operation team and our development team are both learning, and we are learning sometimes through failures and explorations. That's, a, that's one point. Then we are also carry out, uh, not surprisingly, most of our testing in a mini Hadoop cluster with a local age base. So um, it all works on a local machine, but when we, when we deploy it on, on a cluster, uh, there is a lot of well, there is a lot of trial and error going on through that process because at scale, er not everything work works as advertised. Then uh, at the beginning, we had a lot of problems. Uh, or we had problems getting our hardware tuned just right to, uh, oops, to find the right setting for our hardware and to configure and tuning HBase so that it works with our workload. And also we had some stability problems at the beginning because at that time HBase was not, not so mature as it is right now. So that is, that is now much, much better, honestly. And uh, we have no problems in the last couple of months with, uh, with any HBase. And a big problem is as that's why we also uh, developed our tool is some often we don't know what happens on our cluster until we have a big problem with, with it. So our monitoring, we're still working to understand all the metrics that are, um, that are exposed by the system. There are so many metrics from beginning from the operating system over the JVM, HDFS, Suki, oh, um, HBase, Hadoop, and so on, and it's very difficult to find out what is, at what, um, at what metrics you have to look up, look very closely, and to correlate it with other, other uh, metrics to find the problem. So we are working on that, and yeah, it, it gets it gets better and better. 
And uh, the lessons we have learned while uh, developing Hannibal and, and during operating a production cluster is schema design. Schema and key design is, is most important. You have to keep in mind that what's queried together should be stored together, so that's a really important thing that you get, as I said, this, this uniform read and write X uh, performance over the whole cluster. HBase works best in that case. So as I said, monitoring and operational tooling is very important. Um, you have to know what's going on on your cluster. Otherwise, you are blind and you just realize that something is wrong when, when you have a big problem. And when you have a big problem, you can forget about any emergency um, actions because at scale you have so many data. If you have to recover something from HDFS or whatever, it takes time and it's not done in 10 minutes. So forget about that. Then um, the, the, I don't know how to say, the traditional uh, system administrator, it's not cap capable of, 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 of uh, doing all this administration for Hadoop, uh, HBase, and so on, because the ecosystem is quite complex in terms of so many different uh, products like HBase, Hadoop, HDFS, MapReduce, Zookeeper, and many more tools like Uzi for, for coordination, for workflow management, or any um, messaging system like Kafka. The, the ecosystem is so big, you need the so-called DevOps in production, which know, which know the systems, which know uh, have in depth, nap, in depth level of knowledge in, the, in all those systems, and the, and the know-how curve is quite uh, steep. So you need to know the whole ecosystem. That's the point. And um, and here are some uh, links to additional additional resources. The first one is the is the link to, to our Hannibal GitHub. Then there is, as I said, the HBase book available on the Apache site, which is very good. Then here are some uh, repair scripts from a guy from Cloudera. Then there is here the blog post, which has, uh, describes why monitoring HBase is a very important thing. And of course, the book from Lars, the definitive guide of HBase. It's, Always a good reference to have a look there, and that's very well explained. So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, the question is, um, if I have an example of, uh, of an, ex an emergency act, uh, action now. Yeah, yes, I have a very good one, actually. <laughs> um, we had once a problem, well, we, had, we run our HBCK tool and find, find, found out that we have a hole in our meta table, something was missing, and and we tried out several uh, tools to merge, merge different regions, and then we, we didn't quite understand how the merge tool functions, actually, and we, we merged something together which messed our whole, um, whole HBase region uh, assignment, so uh, we, had to, we needed days to, to recover from that problem. That we, re that we could rewrite everything from, from the wider headlock and, and to restore the meta table and, and all those kind of, I mean, basically it was our fault because we didn't understood the tool right, or we, and we, we, did, we did a mistake there and then we messed up very badly. Is that answering your question? Yeah. Well, the question is, what is the practical? Uh, the, what, okay, the question is, what is the consequences when a region server crashes? Actually, 
that uh, the answer is HBase handles that for you. I mean, if, a, if, if you have a re, uh, 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 reasonably sized HBase cluster with enough, enough region servers, uh, and uh, one server crashes, the H master uh, realizes that over Zookeeper, the coordination service, and then tries to uh, take all the regions which are on that region <laughs> server and tries to uh, spread it over the other available ones. So you, sh you shouldn't see any problems there. As should, that should be abstracted from you as, as a, a developer or operational guy. Okay, uh, other questions? Yes? The disk space usage, okay. Oh, okay. So you mean the HDFS space, or I mean when you when you have uh, when you need more space, you just add another another region server, and then you got more. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there are some recommendations like short column names, uh, not more than ten column names at all. A uh, column families, excuse me, and. Those kind of things, but I, I actually I can't say that why that happened. That you have one gigabyte or one megabyte of HDFS, and when you deploy it on the. Yes, it's written with it's a uh, there is there the uh, it's written on a logical structure on HBase, so there is a folder for every column family, and below that there are all the the, the data blocks written. But I don't know if that is the, exactly the reason why you have um, this kind of problem. Maybe we can talk afterwards if we, okay. Other questions? How do you recover data when something bad happens? Okay, the question is how do I recall when something bad happened? As it's maybe the same answer as from, from over there. So, Recovery is actually done by HDFS. You have a, uh, HDFS replicates your data blocks over three, bo three nodes usually, and uh, if you have um, if you, one of your region server breaks down, the the the, the data is, is uh, spread over other data nodes. So you can so HBase knows over the, the name node which takes care of all these uh, data block management how to recover from this failure. Oh, I didn't get that question. Yeah. Yeah, when no data is available, then then the, the cluster is down. I mean, if, if, if all the replicated data blocks are crashed, then, yeah, then it's, it's, it's high, high availability is it's not the main point in, on, in HPs. Is that answering your question? Okay. Yes? Yes, that's possible. Yeah. I'm okay, the question is what is the rule of thumb? When to use HPS and when to use HDFS? Well, I think um, if you have random read and access of your data, then HBase is the tool to use. If you just need to read a huge block of data, then you probably are better off just reading from HDFS, or you have huge image files or whatever. 
it is just stored on uh, HDFS and you are fine with that. I mean, but if you need read, random read and write access to your data, you want to, uh, because HD, HDFS, uh, you just can append. So it's better to have HBase where you, can, you, where you have with this compaction algorithm you can read and then it's compacted together and it's stored on a, a, a sequential file on HDFS. So for that case, it's better to use uh, HBase when you have random read and uh, write access of your data. Okay, other questions? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, the question is, uh, if we think about automating this manual splitting, right? Well, honestly, we just uh, changed our way of splitting from automatic to manual a few weeks ago. So it's we are still doing manually with our, the shell command, and we will probably do it someday in, uh, in uh, automatically, or even we can, we can trigger it from the tool. I mean, as you just see, the, the huge region which re or the huge region which reaches that is close to the, the split size, then you can probably click on that region and say, "I just want to split it." So that's maybe a way we will do it, but that's work in progress. We just released it last week or open sourced it last week, so there are many possibilities for that, but I'm sure you can you can run a cron chop or something with or whatever, but it depends on your region size. I mean, you have always to monitor. If you split too early, then you got a lot of region, then that's also bad for HBase as well. I mean, you need, you need kind of good, dis uh, well-distributed system. Too many regions is not good, too less region is also not good because then you don't have this balance anymore. So you need a uniform growth of your data. Yes? Yes, we knew. Yeah, of course. The question is, do the, the regions grow after splitting, right? Yeah. Yes, they do. Be uh, as you write data, as you write data to HBase, and the data fits with with the row key in that region, it, the region grows again. I mean, yes, and then yes. For example, you have you start with a single region. It's from A to to Z. It's the whole key range is in one region. If it's, it reaches the the, the the split size, it get split in half, and then you have two regions, A to F and F to Z. And then the two regions grow again, and then you split the, the key range again in the, in the middle. And so you got more and more regions, and they're all growing. If you have a uniform data growth, they're all um, growing on the same speed, I say. And then you get probably the, pro the problem of the so-called compaction storm, that all the regions uh, got the or reaches the level of split size at the same time, and then suddenly all the compact compaction happens, and then your H base is, is, is busy with compacting and rewriting all that stuff, so that's why you should do it manually. So you can have, you have, you can have your, you have the time control of your, Uh -huh. No, mm, I don't understand your question. Actually, I mean that the, the data locality is given because the date, the region, the data is stored on that region server where the region is located on. There's not the region here and the data on another data node. I mean the data locality is given by the system. Yes. Or 
Well, it depends on your, the, the question is, does the scan is supposed to be on one region or can it be over more regions, right? So that depends, I mean, that depends on your scan. If you, you say, I want to... Yeah, you, you, your scan can go over two regions, obviously. That's possible, yes. But that is handled transparently by the system. So that's the, you, you just say, you just call the API and say, I want to scan, scan from starting with that row key, and, and, and you can get the number of versions you want, and so on, and then it transparently scans over maybe two regions. Yes. Okay, Lars will... Okay, good. <laughs> okay, more questions? Okay, thank you very much for your attendance again. Thank you.